aspect of our lives. Um, and this is the agriculture. In today's agriculture, um, our scientists treat the plants and soils as a chemical process. When you read, they're just saying that they look at how each element, carbon, zinc, or calcium, affects the mm. plant, but they, they're only looking at it on an individual basis. What does this do? What does that do? So everything's been compartmentalized. Um, we only taught what fertilizer to use, what chemical to spray, and what bugs to kill. Um, that's agriculture today. Um, and it's all about the yield. Um, it has nothing to do with the well-being of the plant, whether the plant has nutritional value or not, that's irrelevant today, um, or the soil that it's grown into. None of these are really taken care of. Um, a lot of, if I can just clarify that, a lot of smaller sort of farmers do look after their soils, but I'm talking of yeah, it's sort of your big agriculture, you're know, trading commercial hundreds of thousands of acres of, of farming. Um, this is what the general trend of farming is. Um, our current understanding of plant soils and fertilizers is going to change forever. Because uh, we only know half the story. Plants are known as vertical people. <laughs> because they are sentient beings, they have a physical structure, emotion, and a soul. So I'm sorry, vegetarian. <laughs> <laughs> you are eating vertical people. <laughs> Hard for some of you to understand, and some will, will, will understand, but the plant kingdom is alive. Yeah. Many experiments have been done around the world which show how plants react to our thoughts and actions. There's been some mm. amazing experiments done where they <coughs> plant up against the, um, uh, what are those machines, that, large detector machines, and they, they, the person will stand there and think a thought of, I'm going to come and burn that plant, and, and you will see reactions, electrical reactions from that plant. So there's been many experiments done proving that plants react to our thoughts. But it's all been sidelined. I'd just like to bring up something there. That's Dr. Cleve Baxter's, Baxter's work. Yeah. He worked in that and it's absolutely brilliant. Yeah, it's fascinating stuff yeah. out there. The we intelligence of plants. Yeah. 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 In the secret part? Yes. Yes. Um, yes. 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 All of this has always been, you know, it's been a, la a label of who has been put on it and then it's just been shelved in file 13. And it's there available if you, yes. if you go and look for it, yeah. but it's not mainstream. Um, we connect to our plants just like the zinc helps our emotion uh, level. The plants, we connect to the plants on an emotional level. It's not a talking of words to our plants. It's, an, it's a sense of knowing. You just know what your plants need. They tell you, you feel. It's a, it's a difficult way to explain, but that's the way I've experienced it with, with plants. It's just the knowing that you know. All right? Plants have a magnetical and a gravitational field. Plants are a reactor themselves. Okay? Each plant species has a different shape of leaves, your arrangements with the branches, all of those different shapes of leaves creates different magrav field. The branch structure creates different magrav field. The size of the plant, its overall shape, these all produce different magrav fields for the plants. So each plant has its, creates its own magrav field. Okay? That's why there's no, you've got such variety of species. And they're all different. Tubers in the ground, your carrots, beetroots, anything that's grown in the ground is hard. Why? Because it's touching the earth, which has a strong gravitational field, so it's more dense. When you have soft and uh, fruit hanging on the trees, because you are just that distance off the ground, 
So you have less, mag less gravitational and slightly more magnetical fields. You get your soft fruits. The soils, just like the plants, your soil is a living entity. Mm. It's alive. Yeah. The bacteria, the fungi in the soils, everything living in your soil is alive. All living entities. These are connected to rocks, crystals, minerals, which are all living entities. These are connected to Earth, which is another living entity. Okay. Getting the point? We can move from the universe all the way down to the bacteria in the soil. It's the same. It's just the scale of the moon. Everything's alive. Okay. And everything interacts with everything. Synthetic fertilizers. In the biggest lie sold to farmers over the last hundred years. They've systematically destroyed the soil biology in your soils. So you're essentially just using a lot of the big scale farmers are using the soil to hold the plant up. That's all it's there for. It's dead, dead soil. And when you've killed your soil, Yes, you have to constantly add more fertilizer because there is nothing else in the soil. And so it becomes a vicious circle. You can't grow anything without the fertilizer. Your soil is dead. So you have to use it every year. And that's what we've done to all our soils. They only make the corporations rich and the farmers dependent on them. Because why do we need to apply nitrogen fertilizer when 68% of the atmosphere is nitrogen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's genius. Okay. You've got tons of nitrogen sitting above your fields. But we'll go along and put nitrogen into our soils. Why? It's madness. Because there's the atmosphere. Nitrogen, oxygen, CO2, Organ and the rest. Okay. Just to throw in the CO2, look at that. Um, and they tell us to stop doing the whole CO2 scam. In the meantime, termites create more CO2 than humans. So there should be a war on termites. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go through different experiments that we've done using the plasma to see what, what, what has been happening. This was our very first experiment. Um, we run an aquaponics farm, so everything is done in water. Um, one of our <coughs> systems has 24,000 litres of water, which we grow. And just briefly, aquaponics, we use uh, the fish in one tank, and we use the fish fertiliser, which and the water flows through all our grow beds and then back to the tank. And um, we grow our lettuce in that got water beds there that where everything else grows. So the fish just provide the fertilizer for our plants. So we, our first time we decided, okay, we don't want to, we didn't, we were pretty new, we didn't know whether we could, what to do with this gans and whether it was good or bad. So uh, I put it in a bottle. Okay, so you can see it's just a small amount in the bottle, and I put that bottle in floating in my water. So I had that little bottle in 24,000 litres of water. Okay. And what happened, I've got some other pictures there further on, but before is, as Lisa's explained from our body that we don't absorb any physical food, say, we absorb the fields, the plants are the same. The plants do not absorb any physical chemical elements. They absorb the fields. Okay. So what, I'll go back because what we had found with that, that particular experiment, um, this was during summer last year, 
heat of summer, our water temperature got to about 30 degrees. Our lettuces were struggling because the, at 30 degrees, our roots um, were looking terrible. And when your root structure is bad, your plants just don't grow. We just weren't getting any growth for our plants. We put that bottle in uh, within a week. Our, our, and all this experiment we did over four weeks, but in that first week we had noticed how our lettuces just started growing. Um, it, the CO2 seemed to counteract the effects of the hot water, so the plants could cope. So it gave the plants what they needed. Um, we produced much bigger lettuces compared to our other systems, because we've got five systems that are all separate, so we could do these experiments. Um, we got better yield. Um, I'll show you first photos. The sun during the sun day, midday, a lot of our lettuce would wilt and hang over like this. The ones in the plasma were sitting straight up; they weren't affected by the sun. Um, so we saw tremendous results just with that little bottle. Okay, other concepts here. Um, what was happening in that system is basically <coughs> the because we had put uh, sea gains, CO2, and CH3 in that bottle. So we had put in all the minerals from the sea gains. We put in the CO2 and CH3 for energy. So that was what we had a combination there. So what the plants were doing is they were able to uh, interact with the magma fields of those elements through the water. That's when we we decided we sort of figured out the, how effective the interaction was then with, with plasma in water, and then your plasma water story came along. Um, now, when you look at plants as a seedling, uh, this is sort of my understanding based on, on our research that we've done so far is when you have a small little plant. Obviously, it's going to get most of its nutrition with the fields in the soil in the beginning because it's very small. Okay, so you get the most nutrition from the seed, and as it grows, the roots spread out into the soil. They're able to get those fields of all the minerals into the soil, and then as the seedling now gets bigger, so the leaves and everything can now start interacting with the fields of the atmosphere. So eventually. Um, my thinking is you end up with a sort of a 50-50 ratio where the soil is getting, the plants are getting a lot of their fields from energy from the soils and from the atmosphere. And they are attracting, when you look at the composition of different plants, each plant has certain different compositions and they'll have, one will have more protein, one will have more silicon and this and that. That is because of the shape and structure of its leaves. Because they create different magma fields to attract different elements that the plant needs. You must have noticed straight away that your root base was enormously bigger, sure. Oh, it just got, it was white, 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 whereas the other was, was... Um, that dies off, doesn't it? It dies off after 12 days, and if you're, it's all about the root base. Yes. Yeah. And the bigger the root base is, the better the plant. The only problem is with that we found that if something is seeking nutrition, like in the middle of winter and there's not enough food, they'll grow a very big root structure because they're looking for food. Yeah. So it doesn't actually necessarily, a big root structure doesn't impact health. doesn't impact health, no. not necessarily, because what it's indicating is it's sending out more and more roots because it's not getting enough. Mm. It's searching and searching for more and more and more. Okay. So as the plants grow and produces its structure, its leaves, it then starts interacting with the fields in the atmosphere. So it's, that's where it's getting its other source of food, and that's where it's getting its nitrogen. 